there. So there's going to be a couple of areas we're going to look for. On Stashun Trainoch. On Stashun Trainoch. On Stashun Trainoch. And the English should, or the translation should come across here because it looks similar to the English. On Stashun Trainoch. This might, the, the word Stashun, I'm going to wait till the end, so I just hope I remind myself of that. I'm just saying that out loud. I'm going to come back to that word Stashun. On Stashun bus. On Stashun bus. On Stashun bus. On Tearfort. On Tearfort. Uh, on is like at. On is the article, um, the definitive article, the, the, on Terraforth. It does a great novel, um, I had it here earlier on, but Crane the Killer, uh, the translated version is The Dirty Dust. It's probably one of the best Irish novels of all time by Martin O'Kine. It's written in the 40s, the 1940s, but there's a funny, um, little joke about the just the, the standardizing of Irish and how you know all of a sudden the, the way we used to spell words is now incorrect and what's you know this kind of thing it's making a joke but the word they use is air uh, because at the end of the day it was obviously a word that was copied from the English language um, in the first place because it was such a new phenomenon at the time on Tearfort on Tiach Tavrna very important this one on Tiach Tavrna the pub on Tiach Tavrna You'll give us the English translation, Pa? I won't. Well, I, I'll say it out loud, but I purposely don't write English in any of my slides, if possible. If that's okay, Ruth. I, I don't know what each one means, except um, I see bus and airport, sort okay. of. Okay. On station, train train station. Oh, thank you. And then bus station, airport, and then uh, pub. Bus. Is, is that like tavern? Is that where that comes from? Yeah, tavern, yeah. pub? Yeah, okay. House of Tavern or ta is the direct translation, yeah. What's Trinach again? Train? Oh, to train station. And the last one. Uh, Tavern is different from a Shabin, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Shabin's. Not too many Shabins left, unfortunately. Um, on Veelan. On Veelan. Restaurant. On Veelan. If you see ever see a word in Irish ending in L-A-N-N, -N, you know it's a building of some description. Um, and it's the, it's the word before that tells you what it is. So, for example, on Fictorlan or Pictorlan Cinema, you know, so it's a literally a building of pictures or moving pictures. Um, and then a, a more obvious one, Lowerlin Library. Lower means book, um, a building of books, a library. So it's that's that they're the three common ones of that. So the L A N N kind of tells you that it's a, it's a building of some description on Veolan, on Fictorlin. And the hour. So again, similar to what was the word we had earlier on? Gau, I think Brian asked, Gau Maleshka, Lyowerland. So that A B H, the Irish pronunciation is generally consistent once you're able, once you're able to know the 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 sounds that they make in the first place. So if you see an A B H, it'll nearly always be pronounced like Au Lyowerland. So just a little tip us. Um, the word I'm going to focus on here, we addressed it a little bit on Tuesday about uh, broad and, and, and slender. Lahan the Lahan and August Quail the Quail. Um, so so just, just for people maybe who weren't there, we have three broad vowels, A, O and U. And then we have two slender vowels, I and E. Basically, no consonant in Irish will ever be preceded by one and followed by another. 
So you'll never see, uh, I'm just trying to think of a word in English now that might have that um, just table just because I'm looking at one. So for example, you've got two consonants here. One is followed, one is preceded by a, if they're preceded by a broad vowel and followed by a slender vowel. You'd never see a word like that in Irish. It would have to be consistent. There would have to be an A or an O or an U there before you put in the E. So for example, a good, there's two good examples of this. Stashun. So if you look at the word Stashun, it's got two syllables, well, three syllables. Sta-ish here. So the A father pronounced like A, the I pronounced like I, Stash. And then the second syllable is U father N, Stashun. And now this I serves no purpose in terms of pronunciation, the second I, that I. Its job is to make sure that this S remains slender in spelling and in pronunciation. So that's why it's there. So um, the exact same thing happens in Pictorlin. So if we look at the word Pictor, or on Fictorlin here in this case, um, this second I serves no purpose only to make sure that the C and the T, which are both consonants, remain slender, just to, for consistency. You'll never see a consonant or a group of consonants with a broad before and a slender afterwards or vice versa. It's just a small thing and it just, it helped me a lot with words. I, I'll just give you a small example. A lot of Irish adjectives finish in the same way. So a lot of Irish adjectives will finish in U, Father, I, L. Um, and there's, you know, there's a word for in interesting simul. Is how you'd say interesting. And for years, when I was in primary school, I always remembered, you know, I just couldn't. I'd always leave out that I or leave out the second I. And once I understood that every consonant has to be broad or slender, it just made it so much easier. And I was able to spell words um, at ease then. Because you'll know how they're pronounced, so that'll help you with how they're, they're said. But again, you, you, you need to know how they're pronounced, I suppose, in the first place. Okay. The pot, yeah. can I ask a question? Yeah. Isn't that... Doesn't my name break that rule? Because I've got S-E and I should have S-I-E, shouldn't I? No, so I and E are okay because they're both slender. But I have an F going right to an E. Yes, but it, the F is the consonant. So the F has to be followed by a slender and preceded by a slender, which it is because there's an I before it and an E afterwards. Oh, good, so it's sandwiched. That's, that's the right, that's a good way of phrasing it, sandwiched, yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, I was confused. No, that's brilliant. Your name is a great way of, of, of teaching people how to pronounce A-O-I. A-O-I is always pronounced E. So e Teach for. everyone, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then when people do ages, the word for age in Irish is ish. So, you know, just there's, there's obviously loads of words like that. Even the leader of the country is the T-shuk. So it's an A-O-I sound again, E sound. So, um, yeah, so there's, there's plenty. Your name is great for that. And County Leash. County Leash, there you go. I never even thought of that before. Yeah, Port Leash, the town in it. Excellent. Okay. Okay. So we're, we're kind of imagining here that we're essentially in a train station or in a bus station, completely lost. Sometimes this has nothing to do with language. It's just the the confusing part of how buses and train stations work in other country. So we want to know does a does a train or a bus go somewhere to somewhere? So we'll say on then on den on bus show go so on den on bus show go wherever it goes to does it go to dublin cork limerick does this bus go to wherever it goes wherever you need to get that on den on bus show go wherever and we'll give you a few town names as well the city names um I mentioned eclipsion earlier on, and if just if you literally imagine a solar eclipse, that one thing blocks out the other. It's the same here. The D blocks out the T. So the D makes the T silent. So it's pronounced on Dan, on Dan, on bus, show, go, whatever. And that's quite common when you're asking questions. The next one is on Dan, on train, show, on Dan, on train, show, go. Does this train go anywhere? Train, A E is pronounced like A in Irish. On train, show, go. So that eclipse is very common when you're asking questions in Irish. It's, it's, um, I like these little rules in Irish because what they do is if you're learning, 
you can recognize if there's a question being asked if you hear an eclipsion. So you don't have to recognize the tone of voice or anything, but you know there's a question being asked because eclipsion has taken place at the beginning. Um, for example, uh, we have another thing for negative. So it's the affirmative, the negative, and the question all have different rules, which will make it very obvious to a listener what is being asked or said here once you get comfortable with it. Uh, we'll put, sorry, we'll put in a couple of um, city names and place names. Um, I could just put in a map of Ireland, I suppose, in, in I should have put that in already. I'm not going into too much detail. There we go. That looks like a good one there. So, you know, there's your kind of main towns and cities um, in Air and Limnoch, Corkig, Auclea, Dublin, Killarn, a lovely part of the world as well. So, Sorry. this is a question that starts with Does this bus go to? And then you'd ask the, the name. Yeah, exactly. You put in whatever place name it may be um, Limnoch, Corkig, Golive. All clear. Thank you. Problem. Now, so look for time. Yeah, and then when you're actually in the town, I suppose, and you're looking for a particular place or a town, maybe as opposed to asking specific, specifically for the place, you want to know how to get there. Conus is further along. Conus. Remember Conus at all the last day? How are you? Connus, Fade your lung, Dull, wherever. Connus, is Fade your lung. Again, Paul, what does that phrase mean? So, how, literally, how can I go to? How do I get to is how I would say it in English. How do I go to? Is Fade your lung? I can. Lovely phrase. Fade is like a. Uh, capability, so it's a capability you have, is fade your lung. Um, I'll show you a quick video in a second, it just came to my attention. I'm just going to find the video here. Um, good friend. So obviously, if you remember Obama's original, um, yes, we can. Um, he came to visit Ireland in two thousand and eleven, I think, um, and just gave a little gave a speech in Dublin. Let's put it on here. It's like thirty seconds long. Bahatanga e Lowerts. Ah, uh, to Ryan. Argus Akoiza. Moss Fader Lobe. Every one of them and all their people are our people on Winter Fane. Is Fader Lane. Is Fader Lane. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Is Fader Lane. Eel Lowers. TG Cahat. I, I have I have a friend from Galway, and he, he when we were living in America, he he used to he had this he would he he spent a lot of time learning um, random sentences in other languages, particularly Eastern European languages, um, and then his they would all mean the same thing: nice to meet you or thank you or something like that, um, and he would have them learned off by heart, and then he would it was solely if he so he, if he met women in in pubs that he'd be able to. Um, talk to them in a sentence that was their language, particularly if they were of whatever nationality, that was kind of his plan. So um, same as Obama, same thinking, if you can speak to a person in their language, um, you speak to them in their soul. I think Nelson Mandela said it, whether he was, whether my friend was thinking that deeply, I'm not too sure. But um, I've always made a point of learning how to say, I don't speak whatever language in the, in the country language. where I am. <laughs> so I can say that much at least. Yeah, exactly, exactly. At the very, because that shows exactly that you've made somewhat of an effort to at least tell them 
um, as opposed to just telling them in English a language they may not understand that you don't understand. Um, brilliant. So we're going to look at a couple of scenarios here. Cost of Hain. Just enter Pierce train station in Dublin. You approach a gentleman, many years older than you, and you, you want to ask him if this train goes to the airport. Um, so have a go uh, putting together what you think you might say for that. Some people are probably thinking I didn't come here to do work, but um, you're not going to be challenged too much on it. I'll give you a couple of minutes and I'll show you what, what I think would be an appropriate answer. It's my laptop, not yours. Okay, we'll have a look through it, guys. Obviously, there's a number of ways to go through with this. Um, I've gone with Gomeleshkel Aguna Usul on Dane on Train Show Kabalyaki. Oh, sorry. On Dane on Train Show Gadi on Terfort. Now, if you wrote down just go on Terfort, that's perfect as well. I didn't want to go into too much grammar. Um, and I'll explain that in a second. Gomeleshkel Aguna Usul. Uh, you wouldn't even have to say I'm going to so to be honest. That's more for letters. I just wanted to kind of introduce it to you. Um, when we were in school, we used to have to call our teachers a voster. They were male, um, which literally means master. Um, good day on, on Terfort, that's just what you would use instead of go. Good day is just if there's an article, uh, which which literally means da. So to the airport as opposed to to, to an airport. Um, but don't be too worried about that. If you got the vast majority of that, I'd be very happy. And will they in cash tonight, Have you any questions on that? I have a question. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go for it, Patty. The um, so the very beginning, go go maleshka. Yes. So you're saying to the gentleman, excuse me, like I need to speak, or is that a way of it's getting their attention, right? 
Exactly. Yeah, it's 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 getting their attention. Exactly. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. If you were apologising, you would say "tabron" or them, but they can use it to change. I'd probably have to apologise for my pronunciation. <laughs> no, problem, no, problem. no problem. Thank you. No problem. Um, you could also have used, you know, "tabron" or them, "koras jakar," "ak." on day and on tray and show the and the entire fort that that would be perfectly fine as well there's no real right or wrong way of saying this we'll do another scenario now um one that has a bit more fun attached to it how oh, could you pronounce the as uh yeah i'll try, I'll try and pronounce each word so first one is uh gao mo and then two syllables, or well, three syllables in the next word, uh, le scale. Le scale. So EI is pronounced like E, like almost like the E we'd have in English. TH is just a H sound in Irish. Scale, scale. So gauma le scale. And a great website. Now, I was going to show you this early, later on, but it might be no hard to show you now. I'll just get out of this for a second. Uh, Bucklore is a fantastic website. So, for example, if you were to type in that word, you've just seen it, you don't know how to pronounce it. Leshke. It'll give you the word. Um, so, if I go into the word, it'll give you the word Leshke. And you'll see here C, M, and U. What these are are pronunciation aids. So, C is Connacht, M is Munster, and U is Ulster, the three main dialects of Irish. So, They'll show. They'll tell you how the word is pronounced. So I'm from Munster, so we we'll listen to how it's pronounced in Munster. Lashkeel. In Connacht. Yeshkeel. And in Ulster. Lashkeel. No, they'll they'll always be fairly similar. There'll be certain words that have big differences. Um, don't get too bogged down. That's it's as I always say. It's the equivalent of listening to the pronunciation of words in Irish, Australian, and you know. Uh, American accents or Canadian accents it's it's not going to be the, the be all member but it, it is a useful aid for pronouncing um, words in Irish okay so cause the you're on in this more you need to find a pub urgently you approach a woman and on the street roughly the same age as you that's not really that relevant and you ask her how do I get to the pub or where is the pub basically so I'll come back in a couple of minutes Well, as I'm new at this, I'm assuming that there's a like a formal and informal address for someone who's older or someone who's roughly the same age. It, it wouldn't be as as sim as um formal and informal as French, for example. But I, I'm just kind of saying, you know, a good usel for the last one. Whereas this time, you might just directly approach them and start talking. You know, that that that's kind of it. It wouldn't be as as formal as as French, for example. Okay, we'll have, we'll have a look at it. So I have Cogger, Tabron or Correstacher, Ach, Cowell and Tiak Tavern. And you might have had, you mightn't have had Cogger, that's fine. Um, you mean you might even have just came up and said, 
Call well and shock Tarvana. And that's perfect as well. Call well and shock Tarvana. Particularly in places like Inish Moor, they'd really appreciate you asking in Irish um, where to get that. Generally on those items, there's there's only a handful of pubs anyway, so they'll probably know the one you're talking about. What's Cogar? Oh, it's Colver. I see. Colver. I think Colver. Colver. Instead of Gaumaleshke, Gail. Yeah, you could yeah, I could put it instead of Gaumaleshke. Like you could have used Gaumaleshke here as well. I just wanted to kind of mix it up and use a different one. Okay. Cogar, just kind of letting the person know you're talking or that you're approaching them. Well, Colver. Oh, will you catch the Nagriv Arish guys? Have we any questions again on this one? If Karkalor. I tried using a uh, Konesi's favorite, which is which yeah. is how do I how do I get to? How do I get to? I suppose yeah yeah, which is essentially asking the same thing. Yeah, you just have to be willing to understand the uh, the directions then that are going to come next. But in more, there aren't many roads anyway. So, um, like the, the, what we're doing here is actually is in the grand scheme of things, it's fairly advanced stuff because it's I kind of wanted to do phrases with you rather than just continue on from Tuesday's class. Um, but this would be in terms of grammar. You know, you could argue there's a lot of stuff going on here that would take a while to build up to. So this, if this is confusing, it should be. You yeah. Know, so that, that that that's a good thing because the words are so new. Yeah, I'm not familiar with uh, the Kur Istia or or that. Yeah. I just said Kavwell and Tia. Yeah, yeah and sometimes it's nice to be go straight to the point and be as direct as possible. What uh, does Kur Istia or Ach mean? Um, so the whole the whole phrase called Blown or I'm sorry to 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 bother you. I'm sorry. Oh, I see. Yeah, Kavwell. Oh yeah, courage to or ah yeah to trouble you. Just just two phrases to say the same thing essentially. If we want to say please, you know, we're asking a question because we're going to move on to looking at being in a restaurant and asking for um for some help or ordering something. Two ways: let the hull. Let the hull, please. August. Ma say the hole. Ma say the hole. So they, they mean the same thing. They're like just two different ways of saying the same thing. Le the hole. Ma say the hole. That's what we would have learned in school. Ma say the hole. And that means what? Please. 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 And are they interchangeable? Basically? Yeah. Yeah, totally interchangeable. There's, there's no one that has a different meaning than the other. And the whole, Ma say the whole way. O-I in Irish pronounced like um, O, oh, so le the whole, Ma say the whole Since we learned God of Mahogot on Tuesday and Tafal um, please is obviously a very important one, le the whole. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, in the Savilan, in the restaurant, Savilan and ordering food. Now, it's a while since many of us have did this. I don't know, if pe most people here live in Kitchener, are restaurants open and stuff at the moment? I don't even know what's the situation like. Kind With limited uh, clients allowed inside, but yes. Okay, okay. It's good. I, have, I don't think I've seen it inside of restaurants since October. Um one for a bit either but um surveillance so just uh ordering things like that that's what we're going to be looking at so waiters is coming to you or a waiter uh we're going to be looking at three questions that they might say cod babalat or do i guess i'm will to rig so the first one cod babalat this is what they might ask you cod babalat what would you like Cod bo va liat. M H is pronounced like a V, like I said the last that we don't have a 
we don't have a visa on an Irish, but MH makes it. Now, you might get a different Irish teacher at some stage, and he or she will say, Cod Bowala, like a W, and that's totally fine as well. Where I'm from and the Irish I speak, we pronounce our MHs like Vs. Uh, other parts of Ireland will pronounce them like Ws. So either one is fine. Cod Bowa or Cod Bowa Lat. And that's quite a common thing in Irish, our Vs and Ws mixed up as they are in other languages as well. What would you like? Er Vallat Ordu. Would you like to order Er Vallat? And you could also you know, take that to mean er vallat and then take out or do and put in anything, you know, er vallat. Once you learn more Irish, would you like, would you like whatever you would like, you know, cup, cup on tea, cup on cafe, this is something you could ask your partner at home or your brother and sister, er vallat cup on tea, er vallat cup on cafe. On will to rig, are you ready? You know, they might say, are you ready to order? On will to rig. DH pronounced like a G again, on will to rig. And we look at the, the three kind of answers, or at least the starts of the start of answers here. Cod bavalat, you would say bavalum, and then you would continue on what was your order? Bavalum, uh, Pionta Guinness, bavalum, um, Antanra, August Antaran, soup and bread, bavalum, salad, uh, bavalum, ishka, whatever you're ordering. Bavalum. Ervalat Ardu, would you like to order? Just simply Bava. I would. I would like to order. I think someone asked the last day, do we have a yes or no in Irish? And we don't. We refer back to the verb. We're going to have bilingual cats here in this group as well by the end of it, by the look of things. Um so yeah, so er, er so we don't have yes or no, so we refer back to the, the verb. Ervalat Ardu, Bava. So that Bava is referring back to Erva. So I like that about the language that we don't have a yes or no. I think it adds to the fluency. Uh, on will to reg, ta. Ta is the affirmative of on will. It's an irregular verb. It just happens to be the most regular. Sorry, it's, a, it's an irregular verb. It just happens to be the most common verb in Irish. It's the verb to be. Are you ready? I am. Ta. Again, this is this is fairly advanced stuff, you know, with, with other with beginners, I generally would do, you know, you'd be building up to something like this. You could be six, seven weeks into a you know, three hour a week course before I might touch something like this. So this should be over your head um, in a way. Card Bavalat, Bavalum, whatever, Bava So we're going to look at a, a, a kind of conversation now between a frastily, which is a waiter or waitress, and you. So on the left hand side, we have the conversation. Um, the frastily is talking in Irish and you're talking in English, but you're going to translate your part into Irish. Now, basically, Tossa is you. Um, so there's certain words you might have to look up. I would like the soup. So you might have to look up the soup. Uh, you might have to look up the large pizza or the big pizza. So I'm going to, this is good dictionary work as well. And chocolate cake, you might have to look up that as well, or any type of cake. Now, if you don't want that, you can put up whatever you want, and then thank you. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes with that. Um, I'll put into the chat the website that I like to use for, for um, looking for words. That's the one I just put up. Uplore.ie, very good. And I know some of you are going to use Google Translate, but that actually might help in this case because of the the grammar rules, don't feel bad using it for today.
Maybe just another minute or two, guys. I thought she can the Lord. Okay, careful, all guys. We'll we'll have a look through it, and again, if you make mistakes in this, there's there's no issue whatsoever. Um, Ervala Thordu, Bova, Bova, just nice and simple. I would. Kabavala Thongeid Khorsa. What would you like for the first course or the the starter, as we might say in English? Bovalum Antanra, Antanra Ledahol. So some of you might you might have found the word Anra. And then just the extra grammar part is on Tanra, which I'm not going to get into today. Uh, just when you're saying the soup, um, just have to put a T before us because it begins with a vowel, but that's okay. Bavalam on Tanra, le the hull. And if you looked up again the pronunciation of that word using the website, you'd be able to pronounce it then as well. So it's a fantastic website. Unto, Kabavalaton, Brief Corsa. What would you like for the main course? Bovalum on pizza more masse de holly. I just used the two different ways of saying please just for the, the sake of using different vocabulary. On pizza more, which is literally the big pizza as opposed to the large pizza. Pizza. Goma carbavalat on milchog, milchog desserts. Bovalum on coca shock larger. Let the hull on coca shock lodger, literally the cake of chocolate. On coca shock lodger, coca is a great word. Uh, you probably have learned this before, but um, that word coca without the father, it's pronounced caca, and caca translates as feces, shit basically. Uh, so having the father there obviously is very important depending on what you're ordering, and it changes the pronunciation of the word as well, coca. Uh, good, I'll bring you water soon. Um, any questions on that, guys? I know there's going to be some grammatical issues. I'm just curious to see that did much else come up. What does Tafolcha Romat mean? Uh, you're, you're welcome. You're oh, welcome. So there's obviously other vocabulary there. And as I said, this I would wait a, a long time before doing this with, with beginners. So for you doing this the second time you might have ever studied Irish is a <laughs> very impressive. 
just if you get a few phrases out of it, it's very good. And one last thing we'll do before we finish. Oh, there's the fault you wrote, got a mag of belly. You'd have to buy one of those mats to put at the front door. And um, one last thing we'll do in terms of money. So you want to ask, you know, KVAD, KVAD Shin, you want to know how much it is. KVAD, you could say KVAD Shin or KVAD Shaw. KVAD Shaw, how much is this? KVAD Shin, how much is that? KVAD Shaw, KVAD Shin, KVAD being the, the important word. KVAD. So I, I'm not going to, the purpose of the next few minutes, I'm going to try and get you guys to understand someone saying how much something is rather than you guys producing it yourself. So all you have to do is worry about understanding how much something is here. You can use a lot of your, your own intuition um, for that. So I should, we'll go through the numbers quickly. Uh, we had these yesterday and you can mine them to yourselves as I'm doing them as well. A nod, a hen, a doe, a tree, a cahar, Kuik, a she, a shacht, a hot, a ni, a de. So, like any language, it's vital you know those rather than learning off, you know, 20 and 30 and 40. Once you know these, um, they'll help you understand the other so much more. Can I move on from this slide? Is that okay? We had these on, I think we had these on Tuesday as well. We did our phone numbers. Okay. Um, what we didn't do is this. A hen deg, a do yeg, a three deg, a car deg, a kuig deg, a she deg, a shot deg, a ni deg, fiha. So deg put at the end of each one essentially means teen. And then fiha at the end, that CH is almost like a glottal, uh, a glottal stop. It's called linguistics, just a H. Fiha. Fiha. As opposed to the French word fiche. Fiha. So again, once you hear deg, you know we're talking the teens which is slightly easier than English, you know, the first few, 11, 12, don't have teen at the end of them. Hen deg, a do yeg, tri deg, cahar deg, cuig deg, she deg, shak deg, a hok deg, a ni deg. And now we're going to look at 20 to, I think 20 is 90 or 20 to 100. But I'll let you um, either take those down or take a picture of them. So you don't even have to take down all of them and um, they would be, be plenty. And then going from 30 up, so we had fiha, and you can just repeat the pronunciation back to yourselves if you want. Triacha, triacha, dahid, dahid, koega, koega, Shaska, Shaska, Shachto, 
Shachto, Ochto, Ochto, Noche, Noche, Kev. And I don't know why a thousand and two thousand and eight is there. I think it's just the image just came with that for some reason, but it's there anyway. So again, most of those look like and sound like a hay and a doe, a tree, a cat or a cooey, a shell, shock, the hook. So they're, they're relatively um, okay to understand. The only one that looks different is dahad. And I'll just explain why dahad is like that. The word fiha is 20, as you just learned. And in old Irish, that used to be spelt fihad, like that. Da is the word for two, or do, da, da, fihid, or da, ihid. Two twenties makes 40, and that's where the word dahad came from, basically. So it's not just, there is a reason it looks different from the rest. So again, it's the very last thing we're doing. We're just going to do a little exercise where I'll call out the price of a product and you have to take it down, the price. Okay, so um, it's always hard for me to tell who's still writing and who's not. Some people don't even like writing, they just like, they might just take a quick picture. So I'll just, uh, I'm just going to get out of this a second. So if you look at this slide, this slide will just show us how it's structured. So for example, similar to counting people, uh, which I know we didn't get around to in the last day, but dollar, Avon, we won. And I, you don't have to take down this at all. This is just so that you, when I, what we're going to do is I want to introduce a couple of products and I'm going to say how much they cost, but I just want you to recognize how it would be framed, how it would be um, structured. God dollar, August dead dollar. So one to 10 is fine. Just the same as in English, you know, $2, except it's singular, $10. When it gets then above 10, the dollar, how would I phrase this? If you think of the smaller number, so if we look at uh, 35, for example, the smaller number is five, that will come first. So it'll be Kuig dollar, five dollars and 30. Kuig dollar is three. So the small number actually comes first. Similar in, even in teen, AM dollar deg. Kuig dollar deg, you know, five dollar teen if that makes sense. Um, for the others, if it's on the decade, you know, 10, 20, 30, it's the same as in English, fit a dollar, three a dollar. And once it goes up beyond 100, it's the same as in English as well. Cade is a death dollar. So as I, as I said, this is about understanding, not about producing. You'll, pro you'll, you'll understand it first and then produce it um, at a later date. So just worry about being able to understand it at the moment. Um, it's like I said, you have a better chance of buying a pint of Guinness than you do of selling a pint of Guinness. So you only need to know how much done, how much you know. You only need to know how to understand it rather than to say how much it is, basically. So I'm going to call out uh, a couple of different products, and yes, there we go. And um, you just write down the number as to how much they are. We'll show them all at the end and see how many we got. So I'll say them each. Uh, three times. So I'll say the product, which is on the left, which are just clothes, different types of clothes, and then I'll say how much it is. Brishta Gorama, 
ni dollar is quega. Brista Goroma, ni dollar is quega. Brista Goroma, ni dollar is quega. Shine, ni dollar is quega. We'll just try and improve as we go down. Broga Nua, ain dollar deg. Broga Nua, ain dollar deg. Broga Nua, ain dollar deg. Shane, ain dollar deg. Very cheap pair of shoes. Hata glass, thirty dollar. Hata glass, thirty dollar. Hata glass, thirty dollar. Thirty. Green hat, maybe for St Patrick's Day or something on Tachtan Shachuan. Hata glass. Colla Lia Gawkhead is Quega Dollar. Colla Lia Gawkhead is Quega Dollar. Colla Lia Gawkhead is Quega Dollar. The look of anguish and pain and frustration on some people's faces doing this. Go head is quega dollar. Guna fada, kid is a de dollar. Guna fada, kid is a de dollar. Guna fada, kid is a de dollar. Kid is a de. I can tell you're improving. Lenya Gov Shacht Dollar. Lenya Gov Shacht Dollar. Lenya Gov Shacht Dollar. Cheap enough shirt as well. Stucky Arashta Kuig Dollar is Triacha. Stucky Arashta, Kuig dollar is Triacha. Stucky Arashta, Kuig dollar is Triacha. Arn socks. Need to get them now before they're all sold out for the 12th of July. Foeji Kirkra, Kara dollar Deg. Fo A G Kirkra, Kara Dollar Deg. Fo A G Kirkra, Kara Dollar Deg. That was a tough one. That was a little tricky one I put in at the end. Excellent, guys. So, look, if you got all of them wrong, you can only improve. And if you're getting some of them right, um, there's ways of looking at it. Uh, as I said, it's, it's just about understanding at the start before you ever get around to producing language yourself. Uh, similar to the way babies learn language. Um, so that's all. Um, there's another slide of that, which you guys can do in your own time with a partner or something. You know, one of you could call it out and the other person take it down and switch it around and you could do that. So um, that's all I'm going to do. There's one thing I might plug an event here, if that's okay. So, um, well, there's a couple of events I should have, I should have plugged, but there's one in particular and I'll send these slides uh, tomorrow soon. You, you'll get them, but the, the Celtic Studies Course Union here at the university um, are organizing a Tronagest, which is a trivia night um, next week. So it's this day next week, but it's on at uh, four o'clock in the day just because we want people from Ireland to attend as well. Um, it's in Irish, which I some of you are thinking straight away, well, I can't go then. <laughs> what I, all I'll say is if, if you are interested in 
even just exposing yourself to how Irish is is um, is used, come along, and I could put you in a team, and essentially, you know, you could join a team if the other people are, you know, all of the only kind of grounds for team. The rules that I've made is that there, there's probably should be at least one person in a team that's relatively fluent. The way the questions have been asked, uh, the answers you won't need to be fluent to co to construct the answers. You know, they won't, there won't be sentences. There'll be more like people and places and things like that and years and stuff like that. Uh, understanding the question, obviously, is the tricky part. But if you want to attend and you, and, and you feel like doing so, even if you just want to come and not even be part of a team and just listen to, to Authentic Irish, um, you know, uh, th there's a way of doing that. So there, there's a, that, that's a registration form and the link to the, the team is there. Um, or even just email me or email Sue to get through to me about, about coming along to attend. We have other events next week as well that I probably should have plugged um, instead of the one event that you're most likely not to go to. Um, but that's okay as well. There's, there's another event next Monday on, we're showing a documentary on Irish immigration to Quebec. Some of you might've seen it already. It's called Carrick's, Don Monsieur Lage de Zirondé. And we're showing it, um, the documentary is in French with English subtitles. We're giving a brief presentation beforehand on Irish immigration to Quebec um, in French and in Irish, not in English, because none of the people involved in the story would have been speaking English. So what's the point in presenting it in English? Um, but we will have a discussion after it with the producer of the film and just for the purpose of everyone taking part that the discussion will be in English so an hour and a half you know from start to finish that's on Monday but I can send that in a separate link um, to Sue and she can share with everyone but um, that's my bit guys and apologies if that's too much over your head but you know you're bound to learn something at the very least so um, are there any questions? We've answered them all, have we? I don't know, Amber's brain is probably going yeah. in circles with the... Yeah. I, I, it out. I'd recommend if you're interested in, in studying like Irish at all, that there are ways of doing it. And, and I generally each semester, I, I hold public classes. I've been doing them online this year, so it worked brilliantly. Um, yes. through, through, because it's through the university, we can offer them for free. Uh, now we're finished this semester, but there will be classes in the summer and now that I have your link, Sue, I can, if ever I know, even if it's not me involved, I can uh, send you the, whatever the program is, and then you can distribute it. And there's always beginners courses. Um, and generally the teachers are, you know, they're kind of um, made in the same mold as me and that we're, we're, we're kind of used to working with, with people in North America and things like that. Enthusiastic people, but with no background in the language. So you've got a background. The bench, That's so. great. We have the enthusiasm, that's for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Did anybody have any any questions? Just I have to pick my ego up off the floor. That's all. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah. yeah, that was that. That was good. It was lots of good stuff. I I probably will just bring my notebook and just walk around the Gale Tuck and show them what you those sentences yeah. you wrote, but. <laughs> <laughs> And they'd appreciate that as well, I'm sure. Well, it will be a lot quicker than me trying to get it out, so. <laughs> One word that I was not familiar with at all, Pa, was cogar. Cogar, yeah. I, and again, it's one of those things that um, if, if you were to analyse a conversation between all your speakers in, in any part of Ireland, it's irrelevant whether they're in the Gwaith or they're not, they're probably losing cogar less frequently every year. Like, I would associate cogar with people in... Kerry in particular, and maybe uh, maybe two generations older than me. Whereas even the way I speak Irish now, I code mix. So I'll start the conversation in the way I would start an English conversation by saying, well, or yeah. come, here, come here, um, let me tell you this. And then I continue in Irish. So that's just, I think that's just a natural uh, mm -hmm. linguistic phenomenon of, of speaking two, two languages simultaneously. Um, yeah. So a couple of times in phase that would unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's great. Very interesting. Uh, Parker, could you comment on the, uh, uh, we were in the Highlands of Scotland a few years ago when we were talking to some people in the crofts there and they were speaking uh, Scottish Gaelic and the word, the, the, the words were very similar, the spelling was quite different, but the, the Highlands Gaelic was, and they had exchange programs with the Gael Talks in the West of Ireland between the people from the Highlands and back and forth, you know, did you have any comment on that? 
Yeah, I think it's so much. Brilliant. I, I've never um, learned of then I've listened to podcasts and radio interviews where one person will be speaking Scots Gaelic and one person will be speaking Irish and and they'll um they, it just seems to work. They seem to figure out a way to understand each other, you know, w- w- basically at ease. Um it's amazing. Or even I, I found the same as you if if I were reading a website um or a newspaper, for example, in Scots Gaelic, uh, without too much effort, you you'd figure out what day it was written on, you figure out what day, what month. Uh, things like that so there's a lot of crossover in vocabulary I would assume similar to the way Spanish French and Italian work within each other I don't know are they much mo- more similar or are not as similar but um, so I have a friend teaching at St Mary's University in Halifax and they have a they have a big Scots Gaelic program uh, we have a small one here but we do teach it here at U of T and but they have a big program obviously in, in Nova Scotia with it and um, I feel like sometimes the Irish language and it, it's funny because Generally, we're, all, we're, we're obviously, a, I suppose, an endangered species in terms of language in comparison to English within our own country. But then amongst the Celtic languages, we seem to dwarf the other Celtic languages in terms of popularity in North America. Now, maybe that's just the circles I run in. But, um, you know, just, just people, obviously, no one's going to come to me if they want to learn Welsh. But I seem to meet a lot more people who you have that Irish connection rather than wanting to learn Scots Gaelic or, or Welsh or Cornish or Manx. Um, and it's uh, that's all I can really say on that. But it is I, it's something I would love to study myself. I'd love to study Welsh because um, obviously it's another Celtic language, and I think it would teach me to it would teach me what it's like to come across a new alphabet, not a new alphabet, but a new pronunciation system, um, and to understand. Okay, this might be normal for one person, but for me now it's really frustrating. And how do I? How do I tell my brain to stop pronouncing it the way my brain wants to pronounce it and pronounce it in Welsh? But I've gone off tangent there, Smother, but that's all I have to say. Yeah, well, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Um, pa, I just had a little question. Tonight you used question marks. Is the rest of punctuation the same? Quotation yeah. marks, colons, all that? Yes, yeah, yeah, it is, it is. Um, the language was standardized in the 40s or 50s, I think 1957, and essentially it was, it's was. it been standardized to the extent that it's kind of, uh, you know, those kind of rules, that's a very good question actually, are quite similar um, to, to English, yeah. So it always starts with a capital letter? Yeah, like there'll be yeah. certain things that, you know, might look unusual, uh, like when we have our rules, the, the, a word that is capitalized all of a sudden would have a capital letter with a small letter before us. But that's that only happens. The, the start of a sentence would be with a capital letter and things like that. Yeah. Mm, okay. Brilliant, guys. Thanks very much for inviting me again, Sue. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're happy to have you. It um, sounds like we have people interested in continuing. So... We're going to look into that. We'll Good. be in touch, I'm sure. Yeah. Hope we get you back, Pat. That was no brilliant. Okay, I'd love to meet you in person at some stage. Hopefully, um, in the not too distant future, looking yeah. really positive. So we'll see how things go. Mm-hmm. For sure. My wife yeah. and I had our third trip to Ireland planned last summer. Didn't yeah. happen. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, the same yeah. weddings this year and stuff, but we'll oh. cross that bridge and we get to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Well, next year. Next year for sure. Exactly. Yeah. Mahagat. Again. Mahagat. Yep. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Bye. Bye.